Ladies and gentlemen, chers amis, it is a great honor for me to address this final conference of the Horizon 2020 project, Inventing a Shared Science Diplomacy for Europe. Unfortunately, I cannot be with you today in person due to other commitments. First of all, I would like to congratulate all the members of the consortium, and in particular, Professor Griset as project coordinator for the enormous achievements. Together with the two other science diplomacy projects funded by Horizon 2020 on science for in diplomacy for addressing global challenges and the other project on European leadership in cultural, science and innovation diplomacy, you have substantially advanced the thinking on European science diplomacy and you have generated new insights into this rapidly evolving research and policy field. With your specific project and with your work, you have played an important role in bringing together a community of European science diplomacy scholars. Let me give you an example. The Warsaw School of Science Diplomacy that you set up has become in a very short time a real trademark in science diplomacy training. In general, the project results are of high relevance for the evolving European science diplomacy agenda. For example, again, let me mention the recent report on leveraging science diplomacy in an era of geoeconomic rivalry, which has been read with great interest by the colleagues from the scientific community and from the, the diplomatic spheres. When we all embarked on this journey, we lived in a different world. While Brexit was already looming, and we all sensed that the world was going to get more difficult, we did not expect that in the lifetime of this project, we would experience a global pandemic and the military aggression of one country in Europe against another, threatening the most fundamental European values, peace and democracy. When it comes to COVID, the pandemic showed that we were able to develop and produce vaccines in less than one year, thanks to the unprecedented global data sharing and to the international cooperation on science and innovation. However, the pandemic also showed how scientific advancement was used for geopolitical gains. In addition, the persisting inequality in access to vaccines demonstrated that science diplomacy still has a lot of work to do. When it comes to the situation in Ukraine, we have reacted with strong determination, freezing scientific relations with Russia, while at the same time establishing support mechanisms for Ukrainian scientists. In particular, with Russia, we have terminated all participation in ongoing Horizon 2020 projects and we stopped all possible new collaborations under Horizon Europe. The European Union has also provided immediate support to displaced researchers of Ukraine. For this, we implemented some key initiatives, such as the Era for Ukraine portal, giving an overview of all the actions, and the Horizon for Ukraine, which encourages Horizon beneficiaries to consider researchers of Ukraine when they publish and fill in the project vacancies. Without doubt, the Russian aggression puts science cooperation and science diplomacy more generally to a new test. This new test consists in making sure that we do cooperate internationally on science and innovation, but with countries that respect democratic principles and align with key research values such as academic freedom, research integrity, gender and inclusiveness and open science. This is exactly what we established at European Union level in the new strategy on international cooperation called the Global Approach to Research and Innovation, which was adopted by the European Commission in May 2021. This strategy has been broadly endorsed by the Council of Ministers in its conclusions adopted last September 
and it has also been broadly discussed by the European Research and Innovation Ministers in one of the key conferences organized by the ongoing French Presidency of the Council of Ministers last March in Marseille. This Marseille conference issued a declaration which highly confirms the importance of values and principles in international cooperation in research and innovation and puts science diplomacy very high in the agenda within this framework. The Marseille Declaration was the source of inspiration of the second set of Council conclusions on values and principles in international cooperation adopted by the Competitiveness Council on the 10th of June. Again, science diplomacy has an important place here, as well as it has in the own initiative resolution that the European Parliament also adopted on the global approach. Now, in order to move ahead on those issues, we will set a multilateral dialogue with our partners, and we will also need to rely on science diplomacy and science diplomats who can help in advocating those principles and ensure alignment. Let me now finish by encouraging you to stay in touch with each other and to keep engaging via the EU Science Diplomacy Alliance. It is really important to keep the momentum. Many thanks to all of you. Thanks in particular to Professor Griset and my best wishes for the future. <laughs>